So yeah, this RTX 3060 is working amazingly over USB 4 on this handheld, and I mean, we're getting some really good frame rates here at 1440p. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be upping the graphics performance of the all new One X Player 2 by adding an external GPU. Now by itself, the One X Player 2 can definitely perform really well. It's powered by a Ryzen 6800U, we've got those detachable controllers, and if you're not really familiar with it, I'll leave some links in the description. I've created two videos so far. We took a look at some PC gaming performance on the built-in iGPU, and I also did a full emulation video. I mean, this thing is definitely a powerhouse when it comes to a handheld gaming PC, but we can get a lot more out of this by adding an external GPU using the USB 4 port up top. Now this does support 40 gig pro Protocol. So uh, yeah, we should see some really great performance out of what we're going to be adding here. But before we go any further, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here, I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Alright, so it's actually pretty simple to add an external GPU to these handhelds that support USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4, even Thunderbolt 3 and some of the older Intel handhelds. But in order to do this correctly, you will need some type of eGPU dock or Thunderbolt dock with PCIe X16 support. So for this one, I'm going to be using the Razer Core X. I recently picked this up on Amazon. It was on a pretty good sale. And, uh, you know, when it comes down to eGPUs, we do a lot of testing here on the channel. I usually use a Sonnet dock, but it recently bit the dust. The uh, board itself just completely died on me, so I needed something new. And this does come with a 750 watt power supply. We've got two 8 pin power connectors, and it supports a three slot GPU, so I didn't have to do any kind of modification to fit a larger card in this thing. And that brings us to the next thing, the GPU itself. For most of the testing in this video, we're going to be using the RTX 3060. I think that this is a great affordable card. It's a non-TI variant, and I've had really good luck using it over Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. And initially, I really did want to go with all AMD. Since we've got that Ryzen 6800U, I thought it would make sense to pair it up with a Radeon card. I was going to go with something like the RX 6750 XT, and I will run a test here in the video. But you'll notice that performance is less than the RTX 3060 when this is connected over a Thunderbolt dock. And I think it comes down to these Radeon 6000 cards being PCIe 4.0. Not exactly sure, but yeah, I mean, the RTX 3060 connected in this dock does outperform the RX 6570 XT. Super simple to get up and running. All I needed to do was plug in that Thunderbolt cable from the uh, dock itself to the USB 4 port on the 1X Player 2. Now, we're going to be using the RTX 3060 as our video card. I've got HDMI running from the card to the larger display, and you can use the built-in display on the handheld if you wanted to, but it will cut down on performance. So, uh, if you want to get the maximum out of it, external display is definitely the way to go. And real quick, I'll give you a look here. We've got that Ryzen 7 6800U, 16 gigabytes of LP ddr 5 x RAM. We can still access the Radeon 680M iGPU that's built into the 6800U, but we want to utilize that RTX 3060. We want to get much better performance out of it, and it really does help out. We're going to jump right into some gaming, and the first one here is God of War. I'm going to be testing on the RTX 3060, and then I'm going to move over to that RX 6750 XT and just show you the difference there. Alright, so here we are. I've got Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, and uh, we're at 1440p high settings with God of War using that RTX 3060 connected over USB 4. We can get an average of around 78 FPS. I mean, this is more than playable, and with some DLSS, we can get a lot more out of it if you want to enable it. It's really up to you. 
So obviously with this Nvidia card, we've definitely upped the GPU performance on this setup here. And the AMD card, the RX 6750 XT also ups the performance, but it kind of falls on its face when you compare it to that RTX 3060. Because with the same exact settings, 1440p high, we're only getting an average of around 58 FPS with this game. And this is one of the big reasons I always mention use Nvidia for an external GPU connected over Thunderbolt. I've always had this kind of performance difference when it comes to these cards. The next thing I did was just run some benchmarks and I wanted to give you a comparison between the iGPU and this external GPU here. So uh, I'm using 3D Mark. First up we've got Night Raid. On the built-in Radeon 680M we got a total score of 25,696. With that RTX 3060, it jumped up to 40,638. When it comes to Firestrike, seeing the same kind of thing here. On the stock eye GPU, 6,809, but with this 3060 connected, 17,048. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy. On the built in eye GPU, 2,808. With that 3060, 8,300. So obviously we're getting some massive GPU gains here and we kind of suspected this. This is exactly what we wanted connecting this thing over USB 4. Moving over to some more real world tests, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 and DLSS is set to balance with this because we're at 1440p with it. But we can actually get an average of around 74 FPS out of this thing with the eGPU connected. Not bad at all. Always like to throw at least one fighting game in, so we've got Street Fighter V, and with this, we're maxed out at 4K. I suspected we were going to get great performance out of this. I mean, on the iGPU, we can run this with a nice low-medium mix at 1080p, so 4K really isn't an issue with this 3060. I also tested GTA 5, and I know this is an older one, but uh, the performance was pretty impressive. We're at very high settings, 4K, and we can play this at an average of around 74 FPS. Dropping it down to 1440p would definitely net you a lot more out of it, but locking it at 60 4K is totally playable. Everything we've taken a look at so far has worked out really well with this external GPU, but there are a couple games out there that just don't do well with the GPUs, like the new Spider-Man games, be it Spider-Man Remastered or Spider-Man Miles Morales. This is one of my favorite PC games right now, but unfortunately, external GPUs just don't play well with this game. We're at 1440p, high settings, and we can get an average of around 39 FPS. And even if I drop it down to 1080, like we have here, we're kind of getting that same average. I could go as low as 720p with DLSS set to ultra performance, and we're still going to be sitting here in the mid 30s. It's just really something about this game that doesn't like external GPUs for some odd reason. Never had great luck no matter what CPU or GPU combo I come up with. So yeah, overall it's really great that we're seeing USB 4 on these handhelds, and the One X Player 2 does perform absolutely amazingly with an external GPU connected. It's great that we can game on the go with the handheld like it is in that Radeon 680M, and then when it's time to, you know, up the performance, we get home, sit down, we can plug this thing in, and game at 1440p. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I will be doing some more testing with uh, eGPUs over USB 4. I think there's a few more tweaks that we can do here just to get a bit more performance out of it. So if you're interested in seeing videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.